Welcome. You're listening to the 365 Firsts Podcast, a show filled with stories of experiencing first times and all the fun, growth, unknowns, and excitement that go with them. It's also the place to get expert advice, motivation, and inspiration to get in on trying new things. And now, here's your host, the master of first times, and chick you're trying to keep up with, Anne Bernard. Yes, indeed, I am the chick you want to keep up with and the voice you want in your head because I am the voice that tells you you can. Welcome to another episode of the 365 First Podcast and Expert Advice Before Your First Time series. I am your host, Anne Bernard. It's definitely becoming tougher for many people to cope with the stay-at-home orders and the requirements for social distancing. I totally get it. As a matter of fact, one of the ways I'm continuing to cope with what's happening with the pandemic is by researching all of the first times I plan on doing once we can safely return to life outside our homes. One such first that's on my list is bobsledding. So it's awesome to have the 2018 U.S. Olympic silver medalist in the sport of bobsled, Lauren Gibbs, here to provide expert advice before your first time bobsledding. As I mentioned, Lauren is a 2018 U.S. Olympic silver medalist in the sport of bobsled. She accomplished this goal just three and a half years after leaving a successful career in corporate sales management in 2015. She earned an undergraduate degree from Brown University in entrepreneurship and an executive MBA from Pepperdine University. Through public speaking, she has found a way to satisfy her passion for corporate level coaching, training, and consulting while continuing to train for the 2022 Olympics. After the 2018 Winter Olympics, Lauren was invited to give a TEDx talk where she discussed navigating the complexity of goal setting and taking calculated risks to live a life of fulfillment. Well, welcome to the show, Lauren. Such a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so you are my first Olympic athlete. And before we even get started on setting people up for success with their first time going bobsledding, I definitely want to go through your journey of first times getting to the Olympics. So let's start with what is your first memory of being exposed to bobsledding and your interest in it? Um, I can't say that I ever knew I had an interest in bobsled. My story is a little different. I think when you think of an Olympian, you think of somebody who found a sport at four years old and, you know, happened to be good at that sport, was homeschooled. And then, you know, they're after years and years of hard work culminated in the, the Olympic Games. And so my very first introduction to this sport was very different. I was 30 years old. I'm from LA, but I was living in Denver, Colorado. And it was introduced to me uh, through a friend who had another friend who was a bobsledder and they, and she knew that they were looking for uh, additional athletes post the Sochi Olympics. So that's my first memory of really ever talking about bobsled other than the cool runnings movie, um, which is one of my favorite movies. It's not uh, completely accurate, but uh, you can't carry a bobsled on your shoulders, but it, it's definitely, it definitely shows the grit that is needed to be a elite level bobsledder. Yeah, that's a, that's a, one, that's a great movie, but that is so awesome that in fact, your first exposure and your first time to it was when you were 30 years old. So you just never know what's going to come across your path and where it's going to lead you. Now, what about your first time in a bobsled and the first experience? What was that like? So that happened a few months after hearing about the sport. So I was told about the sport in August of 2014. My first ride happened. October of 2014 and I subsequently made the team that season Um, I think people describe your first bobsled ride like being kicked off a cliff in a trash can and so most people have never been kicked off a cliff in a trash can so it's it's a hard thing to imagine but I guess I would I would describe it kind of like the worst turbulence you've ever experienced but everybody should try it it's a lot of fun (laughs) oh wow so we will definitely get a lot more into that 
But that obviously that didn't discourage you. You're like, okay, I can do more of this. Now you must have been quite the athlete to begin with to just be able to jump into this new sport and find yourself on the Olympic team. Yeah, I mean, I've been playing competitive sports since I was eight years old. It started with soccer, um, continued on with track and field in high school. Uh, I played some softball and then uh, ended up playing volleyball in college for Brown University and was captain of the team. So I've definitely been an athlete all of my life. I just figured when I graduated, that phase was over, but I guess I was wrong. <laughs> That's a good thing to be wrong about. Now, what yeah, about, bad. yeah. Now, what about your first run in your first Olympics? What was going through your head? What mm-hmm. did you feel like? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, you work so hard leading up to, or I work so hard leading up to the Olympics, just trying to make sure that um, I was prepared because the pilot I was going to the Olympics uh, had been, this would be, this was her third Olympics. So Lana Myers Taylor, she had won medals at both previous Olympics. And so I just prepared to try and be the best because I didn't want to be the reason she didn't win a third Olympic medal. And so I think that uh, the most nerve wracking part was the three and a half years preparing and not knowing. And by the time we got to that first run, I'd worked so hard and I felt ready and I felt like, you know, I'd work for this, that there was kind of a sense of calm and just excitement and really just trying to be in the moment because, you know, I worked for essentially four years for four minutes of competition. And if you really boil it down, my role in the Olympics was 30 seconds long. And so if you don't take a second to take it all in and in the moment, then it passes you by and you're like, Oh, was that it? And so that's what I was, I was trying to be in the moment, take it in and, and really enjoy the experience. Wow, that's very interesting and very wise of you to realize you need to grab this this moment while while it was there for you. Are you planning on competing again? Yeah, I mean, we just finished. I just finished my sixth season. Uh, it culminated with a world championship win in Altenburg, Germany. So that was exciting. And um, I'm taking it season by season. I'm 36 now. And so my body doesn't quite bounce back like it used to. And the sport is very tough on the body. So just the training and the sprinting and the lifting and the G forces that you feel going through corners on a bobsled track can be, can be rough on a body. So, you know, as long as I'm still fast and still relevant, uh, pushing a bobsled, then I'll, I'll continue to do it up until Beijing 2022. And that's kind of my, my hard stop. Okay. Well, that's fabulous. How fast do you end up going? Depends on the track. Um, anywhere from 75 to 95 miles an hour. The fastest track in the world is West Canada. It also depends on track conditions. So if it's warmer out during the winter, the track's going to be slower. It's going to be, or if it's humid, it's going to be frost. Um, the colder it is, the harder the ice is and the faster you go. So. Well, let's get into it. Let's get some uh, pointers, some of your expertise to some of the first timers to include myself. I've never done it, but I would love to do it even after the way you described it. So <laughs> first, how do you even find a place where bobsledding is accessible? That's a great question. It's definitely more popular in, in Europe. So if you're in Europe, there's bobsled tracks in Switzerland, in Germany, in Austria, um, in France. So they're, they're, they're more popular there in North America. There are currently three bobsled and skeleton and luge tracks. It's all the same track, um, that are open. So there's one in upstate New York and Lake Placid in the Adirondack mountains. There's one in park city, Utah, and then there's one in Whistler, Canada. Okay. And they offer passenger rides. So it's a little different of a ride than what I take. It generally doesn't start from the top, which is which is good. So the speed's a little slower and it's a little bit more of a, it, the, the ride's a little more palatable, I would say. <laughs> yeah. That's probably wise <laughs> to, right. to, to go that route. Now I regret, I, I, I spent quite a few years in, in Europe, so I regret not doing it while I was out that way. Um, hmm. Yeah. But I, and I've been to Whistler and I would love to go back. So I might have to return to do my bobsledding there. Although I'm closer yeah, to Colorado. Whistler is beautiful. What does somebody need to know then before they even get in there to prepare themselves? 
So I would say, um, first things first, it's not going to feel like a roller coaster or a water slide. It's going to feel, and you're going to hit walls. So it's going to be loud. It's going to be bumpy. And you're going to hit anywhere from two to five uh, G forces. So probably stretching and warming up is a good idea. You're going to need a helmet, safety first. Uh, I wouldn't eat right before your first bobsled ride, just in case you get a little nauseous. And maybe if you are one that gets motion sick, maybe take some Dramamine beforehand. And then, of course, come wanting to have fun. Yeah. So, something. so I love you mentioned that because I do get motion sickness. And when I read your, <laughs> your recommendation, I was like, oh, I am so glad I know that. I got sick yeah. doing pole dancing, just going in circles in a pole. So <laughs> I would imagine that without Dramamine, that would be a really rough time once I get to the bottom. But I was thinking- be. I don't need it, but some people do, yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it's going to go by really quickly. Yeah, so the total ride actually takes a minute. So the 30 seconds was the four pushes over four runs. So every push takes about five and a half seconds. But the total run takes about a minute. Um, and sometimes it can feel like the longest minute of your life. And sometimes it feels like it's over in a flash. So it depends on how the ride goes. How dangerous is this? So um, I, obviously for you, because you're, you're a breaker and then there's, there's a driver and a breaker or what's the situation mm-hmm. if you're doing it, somebody's going to be the driver. Does that make you an inexperienced person as the breaker? How does that work when you ride with somebody else and you've never done it before? Yeah. So uh, anybody who's never bobsledded before isn't going to be a pilot. The pilots usually start as brake men or brake women and you know, once they compete for a couple of years and if they want to become drivers, they go to driving school and then they kind of work their way up to the, the lower circuit of racing and then they can compete to be on the national team and race the World Cup, which is the high, highest tier of com- competition. So for women's bobsled, we have two women bobsled and now we have monobob, which is single bobsled, which is silly. But uh, and then men have two and four uh, man bobsled. And so there's myself and a break uh, and a, sorry, and a pilot. So um, I could have become a pilot if I wanted to. um, But after the last Olympics, I was 33 going on 34. So I figured if I was going to do another cycle, my best bet to winning another medal would be to stay as a break person. So, so, but when you're riding with a pilot as a newbie doing it for the first time and you have the job Mm -hmm. of a breaker, like what, what does that entail? Um, it entails pushing the sled, hopping in, riding down, and then pulling the brakes at the end. Okay. So there's no braking along the way. No. If you brake in the middle of the track, you will flip. <laughs> That's not fun. Okay. So wow, that has Don't to be that. Don't touch yeah. the brake. <laughs> Don't touch the brake. <laughs> so it has to, that has to be really interesting for somebody who take newbies on and they have to trust that that person is not going to get scared and go slamming on the brakes and having them flipping over huh yeah and it's 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 happened before where people misunderstood what they're supposed to do and were pulling the brakes off and on luckily they didn't flip but uh yeah it's and it messes up the track too so it the brakes are these big metal teeth essentially that when you pull the handles up they come out the bottom of the bobsled almost like landing gear you know landing gear and gauges comes out you want the track to be as smooth and as free of imperfections as possible. It's never going to be perfect because they hand shave it. But uh, if you start breaking in the middle, that's going to ruin the track. So and it's not you, advised. Yeah, put you in danger. So no breaking. Mm-hmm. So for the newbies, when you go for your first ride, do not touch the brakes until you get right. to the end. Okay, mm-hmm. well, that's very good to until know. you're told to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you mentioned that you're going to experience three to four times going through G-Force. Obviously, mm-hmm. for those, well, I don't think I've ever experienced that. Can you explain a little bit more what that's like? So my when I sit in the bobsled, my legs are like partially extended, and then I bend down, and then my, my head is basically between my knees. So it basically feels like pressure is pushing me into the bottom of the bobsled. And so if you take a passenger ride, you generally sit up, and so you'll feel the pressure kind of pushing you down or back depending on how high you're how how you're sitting so yeah it just basically feels like there's an invisible hand pushing you (laughs) 
Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, anything else our first timers should know about? No, I think just, you know, just have fun and it's good to try new things and experience something that you normally would never do. So I'd say find a bobsled track near you and give it a whirl. <laughs> <laughs> Let's shift over and we will play the first time a lightning round. And then we'll find out more about some other things that you do that people can get in touch with you to sign up. Okay, so the way the first time lightning round works is I'm going to give you some options. And if it's something you've done before, you say you would swipe up. If it's something you've never done, not interested, it's left. And if it's something that you never done and would like to do, then it's right. Okay. Ready? So here's the first one. Take part in a fashion show. Uh, swipe up. What, what was your first fashion show like? I mean, I'm from Los Angeles, so um, as a kid, I did like a a local fashion show for like a small designer. Oh, that's I neat. Never went anywhere. Were you and nervous then, or did you like it? No, it was fun. And then uh, the year the year of the Olympics, we had a fundraiser, and so we had a, a little team fashion show for some of our donors to show off some of our Olympic stuff. So yeah, that was. Oh, fun. how neat is that? Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, you, you, you probably have done this too. Uh, go to Comic-Con. Nope. Uh, uh, no. I'm going to go with swipe left on that one. Uh, I'm not interested <laughs> in Comic-Con. All right. Comic-Con uh, is, my, is my brother's uh, area. He's, the, he's actually a voiceover artist and a, a big anime fan. So I leave that to him. <laughs> okay. Well, it might, be, it might be fun to just go experience it with him. I mean, I, I've been down in San Diego when Comic-Con is going on because I have friends that work in the industry. So we've, I've seen people running around in the costumes, but as far as like going to the events, probably not my, not my, uh, not my scene. Not your scene. All right. I think it would be fascinating just to see everyone in their costumes. I'm not good at coming up with costume. I'm not a costume wearer, but I really appreciate those who like really get into it. <laughs> Okay, play foosball. Swipe right. Oh, sorry. No, swipe up. Yes, swipe I've up. done that. Done that's that before. Uh, <laughs> play casino war. Uh, I've never heard of it, so I'm going to go with swipe left. <laughs> so <laughs> this is, there's literally, not all casinos have this, but there's literally some casinos where you can play like war. So it's like regular mm -hmm. game of war that you play as a kid, but you're oh. gambling. <laughs> Yeah, but you're okay, gambling. Well, I changed on it. my my answer. Swipe right. That'd be fun. Yeah. It's so <laughs> I like to gamble. Yeah. And it's so it's so crazy. You're like, there's no it's sheer luck. That's it. <laughs> okay, so that's yep. a right. Okay, tour a chocolate factory. Um have I toured a chocolate factory? I mean, I've toured like an ice cream factory. I, I toured Ben and Jerry's. So they have chocolate there. Does that count? Mm. <laughs> and this is more like they purely just make chocolate. Make chocolate. You get to have yeah, no, I, testing, you know, taste of chocolate along the way. And I guess I'm not a with huge ice cream. chocolate fan. So if I did choose a tour factory, it'd be like a cheese factory. So I guess. Oh, okay. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Uh, yeah. Try parkour. Um, I'm gonna go swipe left on that one. Swipe left. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Volunteer at an animal shelter. Uh, swipe up. All right. What was your uh, first experience I like? I volunteered at the South Pass Humane Society in high school. And fun fact, I met Paul Walker there. So that was kind oh, of cool. that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. In like the height of his career, so that was pretty pretty neat. That's awesome. All right, uh, do break dancing. I'm gonna go swipe left on that one. Um, All right, not interested in that. Well, I'm just not bendy enough. I'd hurt myself. <laughs> I was say, it's definitely a young person's uh, thing. Uh, yeah. So my nephew loves break dancing and parkour, so I enjoy watching him do it. But um, he he hasn't tried to teach you some moves. Huh? He hasn't tried to get get you into it. No, I'm not cool enough for that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like cooler than I now. Am. All right, it's okay. Uh, take a sculpting class. Uh, so like clay. Uh, 
yeah cl- like any type of sculpting or it could be like a yeah movie. i i would say so i guess neutral i did ceramics as a kid and like potter's wheel but i've never done sculpting but i i like working with clay so maybe swipe right swipe right okay it yeah. could be ice sculpting it could be there's all kinds of different type cheese <laughs> it could be cheese sculpting <laughs> Eat, eat, eat along the way all right yeah. uh ride in a self-driving car uh swipe up swipe i've ridden up. in a tesla yeah. all right was it completely self-driving or at the yep. time or all right yep. what was that like a little freaky weird. or <laughs> yeah it was weird i mean luckily it was like in the middle of the day so then we were on the, an open freeway so that there, there like wasn't a lot for it to hit and like, you know, you're still sitting at the control, so you can put the brake on when you want. Um, it, but it's important to pay attention <laughs> when you're behind the wheel, whether you're driving or the car's driving. <laughs> so. Yeah, they're not quite there yet to where you can just start right. reading, take a right. nap, and check yeah. out. Well, this has been a blast, Lauren. How do people get in touch with you and learn more about what you do? Yeah, there's a few ways. You can always find me on the Instagram or, or Twitter at LAGibbs84. Um, and then right now I'm hosting some online experiences through Airbnb. So you can sit down with me for an hour and check out some of my Olympic stuff. I'll answer questions about mindset, goal setting, overcoming adversity and uncertainty and, uh, show you my Olympic medal and just kind of tell you my story of how I took a risk, left my corporate career and became an Olympian. So, yeah. Well, awesome. And we will include all of these links when we post this episode online on the 365 First Challenge blog. So thank you for joining me, for sharing your expertise and inspiring all of us to go out there and try bobsledding for the first time. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode and got some solid takeaways. I know I did too, for sure. I will absolutely be taking Dramamine before I do bobsledding and I will make sure to not touch the brake until somebody tells me to. We will be taking a short break from the expert advice before your first time series. For at least the month of June, maybe June and July, I will definitely let you know on the last episode of season one how long the break will be so I can line up some more amazing experts to get more episodes for season two. The other series, the first time story series will continue and I will also continue to tell you some of my first time stories. So this is a great opportunity for you to message me at contact at 365firstchallenge.com to let me know what expert you would like to have me in season two and what topic you'd like covered. Now, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the show while you're there. Leave a review. Until we meet again, get busy having first times and new experiences. You've been listening to the 365 Firsts Podcast. Hope you've gotten inspired to start your journey of first times and new experiences. Join the 365 Firsts Challenge by downloading the app at your local app store. Check out Next Level Firsts Coaching for additional assistance. Contact us if you want to share the stories of your latest firsts on the show. Now, go get busy having new experiences.